Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, the 15th of December, 2014, ending Friday the 19th. Let's take a look at where the market did this week, then we'll talk about, uh, we'll look at it from a daily chart perspective, then we'll look at it in an intraday perspective, and then we'll talk about what's coming for this next week, which is really the last full trading week of the year, amazingly. So here's the ES. Uh, we sold off this week, obviously. Monday was a down day. Tuesday, we gapped down and recovered. Wednesday, we opened flat and dropped again. Thursday, kind of played both ways. It looked like it might be stabilizing. And then Friday, we rolled over yet again. It doesn't look too pretty on the chart here, of course, as the uh, government passed the uh, omnibus spending bill and kept the government in play until next September. But somehow along the way, this is not holding the market up, which is interesting. Because when the market's been up this much for the year, typically you stay, you hold near the highs at least, at least until the last two weeks, and then you just kind of go flat because of the holidays. It's kind of unusual to sell off right now. It would indicate maybe something a little bit bigger is going on in that play. Here's a look at the NASDAQ side. These are the NASDAQ futures. We'll look at the cash indices so you can really see in the socks. The S&P here down at 2002 again, and the NDX. 4,200 essentially, we'll call it. Uh, there is a static trend line on the NDX. That's the red line. That would be the current target. NASDAQ lost 47. S&P lost 33. On Friday, here's the semiconductor index. The SOX <clears throat> lost uh, 12. Biotech's back down, finally closing under that moving average. Uh, lost about 38. Look at some of our key stocks that we like to follow. Google got a massive inverted cup and handle formation here now on Google. If they're selling everything off, into the back end of the year for whatever reason, that one looks like a prime target. Apple, another one, doesn't look too good. The red stat trend line is the short-term target at 108 or so, uh, but it could get ugly beyond there. We did have a good trading week for our purposes, three really solid days, two okay days. Um, the futures were nice as well, and we made money at Forex, but uh, you can see our weekly recaps, our daily week recaps in our market blog on the site. We have a nice, nice run in the stock side uh, this week. Here's a look at the Amazon. Uh, has pulled back, as you can see, to that red static trend line. Uh, Netflix, which we traded a couple times this week, not looking pretty, obviously. Key daily chart breakdown set up there as part of a broader pattern here since the gap down a while back. Here's a look at Tesla. Nine bars down on Tesla, so there's now a green static trend line up top. That could be a target. Also, let's look at the volume for the week. Uh, we closed Friday at 1.76 billion, million shares, billion shares. Uh, the whole week was back up, fortunately, after what we saw last week, which looked a little less than fortunate. So we're back up to 1.7 or higher all five days this week. Nothing too big, nothing above 1.8, so it was pretty steady uh, the whole week. Here's a look at the VIX, uh, which is uh, climbing again as the market's rolling. You'll notice there's a, it's amazing how this works, even on something like the VIX. There's a green static trend line from the last nine bar move down, and we got a 13 buy signal on the VIX. And and by the way, this this chart, this is just technically amazing. So you had a nine bar upward count at the beginning of September. That gives you the red static trend line. You had after you ran up in October, you had a nine bar startup phase to the downside in October, and that gives you the green static trend line. Look at the low three, uh, four days or five days ago is right on the red static trend line. We got a 13 buy signal, and that shot us up. And now we've hit the green static trend line and topped out exactly at that point. That is absolutely remarkable. Um, so the, uh, I mean, that's just, if you're ever looking for a chart of how the secret Comer tools work, that is absolutely a chart that you should look at. We'll probably have to make a, a video um, of, of that for people. Uh, that is just classic. All right, let's take a look at crude oil. This has obviously been part of the story here, and this is playing a role in what's going on. Uh, we closed under $60, $57.80 for the first time ever, uh, for first time in a long time, I should say. Notice there was a 13 buy signal from the seeker back uh, at the beginning of the month, bounced for a day or two, and then rolled over. Um, we then came down, and the pink risk line is now in play. There's a, the risk line is actually pretty far down from where the buy signal came in. Because that last bar was so far down, the risk line gets tacked on and added downward to that. So we're just approaching the risk line. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what that does. And here's the YG. This is the uh, this is gold, which actually did rally back a bit this week. All right, let's move and take a look at uh, the intra week action here on the ES. We'll do it in 10 minute bars. And then we'll look at the economic data and talk about what to expect this week. 
Uh, so you can see again, um, now this is the, uh, we'll go to the front month contract here because that's the best way to track this for now. Uh, since we're in the middle, we just handled quarterly contract roll on uh, Thursday and Friday on the futures. Here's the ES. See, we came into the week, opened fairly flat, a uh, little gap down, filled it, rolled over. Uh, Tuesday, there was a big gap down, came back up to fill that. Wednesday, there was a small gap down and kept going lower. Thursday, we gapped up and uh, basically did a nice inverted cup and handle and just broke it uh, very late in the day, almost filled the gap. Friday gap down, did not fill the gap, looked a little flat, and then very late in the day, a little sell-off, as if there's something coming over the weekend. Really, really uh, interesting to see. Um, the uh, NASDAQ side, not much different. Uh, did sell off a little bit more uh, on Friday. But, uh, you know, overall, the NASDAQ, only 100-point range, 120-point range for the week. All right, so the economic data and what's coming out this week. Well, the biggest thing about this week, there's a couple big things. First of all, it's triple expiration, which means that Friday is a huge volume day that goes nowhere. Friday is going to be mostly a waste of time. The options unraveling move from that should occur either Wednesday or Thursday, and we'll discuss that a little more in a second. But the actual expiration day is usually pretty boring, and it's not just stocks. It's, stock, it's uh, options, futures, and uh, commodities all expiring on the same day. Uh, no economic data next Friday except for that expiration. We do have a two-day Fed meeting. That's Tuesday and Wednesday. So market tends to kind of sit around waiting for the Fed, even though there's probably not much new they're going to say that's going to surprise us. Uh, so in terms of data, Monday we've got uh, Empire Manufacturing um, at 8.30 a.m. We've got capacity utilization and industrial production at 9.15 a.m. We've got the housing market index at 10 a.m. None of these are big deals. Uh, Tuesday morning housing starts and building permits, not a big deal. But remember that two-day Fed meeting starts on Tuesday. Could get options unraveling on Tuesday. Usually you see it Wednesday or Thursday. We'll be on alert all three days. Uh, that, again, starts after the first hour's play when you get it. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got the MBA Mortgage Index. CPI, which is a big one, could get the market moving. Uh, cr current account balance, crude oil inventories, which is uh, a weekly number. And then at 2 p.m., that Fed announcement. Last one of the year heading into the holidays. Again, nothing really expected. Uh, Thursday, initial and continuing jobless claims. That's the weekly data. Philly Fed, leading indicators, and Natty Gas. Uh, just enough to maybe keep us moving, especially if they save the options unraveling for uh, for the Thursday. And Friday, there's no uh, there's no data. So uh, we'll be focusing probably the mo Monday could give us something. Give, ba based on what we saw at the end of the week here, we might see something on Monday. Tuesday probably going to slow down a bit as people start to focus on the Fed. Wednesday you're going to have the Fed, so do we get the options unraveling Wednesday or does it come Thursday, especially when it's triple uh, expiration? Hard to say, but we'll be looking for it because one of those two days should give us a big move and a lot of opportunity. Friday is going to be dead and a waste of time. What happens after that? Last two weeks of the year, uh, Monday and Tuesday, full trading days. Wednesday uh, of Christmas week is a half day for Christmas Eve. Nobody's going to be around anyways. We won't be putting up calls for that. Most people will either be gone the whole week or certainly out the door by Tuesday. Thursday, the stock market is closed. Friday, nobody's going to come back for a single day, even though it is a full day. The following week, Monday and Tuesday, and this time Wednesday, are full trading days. You cannot have a half day for the last full day or last trading day of the year, even though it's New Year's Eve. Nobody's around, though. So you're going to see really light volume. Volume's going to drop off to nothing at that point. Uh, Thursday of that week will be closed for New Year's. And, of course, Friday we reopen. It is the first day of the year, but, of course, no, most of the time nobody comes back for that. So I wouldn't expect to see anything uh, too major happen uh, on uh, on that Friday. And then from that point we start to pick up again. So it would be uh, Monday, January 5th is when they get serious and get back to work. I'm just going to pull up the volume chart for you. Just so you can see here, if you look around, you can see December of last year. Look how bad the volume gets that last week of the year. I mean, literally worse than August, and August is pretty bad. So, uh, you know, there's nobody – if you get blown up trading and overtrading in that week, you did yourself a major disservice by even trying. We'll come in. We'll try to find something in the first hour or two, and that is it for sure. You don't want to be caught overtrading in a market where nobody's around. Uh, we'll be around to help you as usual in the lab. Charts brought to you by eSignal. Have a great trading week.